All right, welcome to the Ironwood Gym. Today I want to go over how to get back into training. Now let me clarify what I mean by get back into it. Um, if you've just taken a month off, two months off, six months off, a year off, I'm not talking to you. Okay, that is a whole different ballgame. What I, the person I'm talking to, okay, the group of people that I'm talking to, are those that just finished a meet, just finished a competition, and they need to start their training back up, probably within one or two weeks of that competition. Um, or the person like myself, I, I stopped competing several years ago, but I still kind of train like a power lifter, and I test my lifts every so often, really twice a year. Okay, so I just did that. I just did that uh, two weeks ago. I took a week off, and now I'm getting started back into my training. Okay, so that's the, that's the context that we're going to frame this question from. If you just took two months off of training because you were busy or you had stuff going on, you need to find another, a whole different, this, that's a whole different discussion. All right, that does not fit here. That's a whole different context that we would have to frame this discussion in. You just took six months off because of whatever reason, that's a whole different answer. All right, so I'm really focusing on someone that has been training consistently, just took their training to another level as far as getting prepared and training at a comp for a competition and competing in a competition, or someone like myself who just went through several months of training uh, and tested all their lifts, and now they're, they took a little short time off, one week, two weeks at most, and that's kind of pushing it, and now they're getting started back up, okay? In other words, they have been consistent. They utilized a break in their training as a deload, and they need to get started back again. So if that's you, you're who I'm talking to. Um, first off, I do think it's a good idea to take a short break one week, possibly two weeks being at the longest after your competition or testing period, okay? The reason why is that your body, both physically, mentally, and not just both, uh, but because also emotionally, is under a lot of stress at a competition. Whether you feel it or not, you're going through a tremendous amount of stress at that competition. Um, if you put that same investment into uh, testing your lifts at certain periods or certain intervals throughout the year, you may have that stress at those points as well, okay? Um, you're physically, obviously, in all honesty, competitions for me were easier than my training. Competitions were much, uh, much easier because the work that I was doing to prepare myself was at a whole nother level than going into competition, having warm up sets, three max singles for each lift, uh, really just didn't compare to the work that I was doing in the gym. So physically, but physically you are taxing yourself with nine maximal attempts, uh, probably all 90% or above throughout the day and being could be throughout a very long day, depending upon the competition you're at, that does pose a significant amount of physical stress on your body. From the mental side and the emotional side, especially in a competition, you have, uh, if you're a geared lifter, you have the stress of making sure everything's ready, in time, ready on time, making sure that your wraps are done on time, your straps are pulled up, you're getting to the bar on time. Um, the stress of geared or raw, doesn't matter, the stress of making sure you hit your openers, making sure you stay in the meet. If you miss your opener, what are you gonna do for the second or third attempt, okay? Um, once you get that opener for each lift, it's really not that, to me, that mentally stressful because it's just you're picking your attempts and you're going out there and performing. But you have to get those opening attempts because if you miss those, it's gonna be very difficult to come back and get it unless it's just a technical error that you can fix real easily. It'll be difficult to come back and get it on the second and third attempts. 
So then you're thinking, you know, you missed two attempts and you're thinking, if I don't get this, I'm going to bomb out. That poses more of a mental stress on you. From the emotional side, you're probably amped up pretty good. Okay. Now I was more of a calm lifter. I didn't do well if I tried to get myself psyched up, but inside I was amped up pretty good. Okay. I had a pretty good sight going or whatever you want to call it. Um, and some lifters do it more, more, you're able to see it more. It's more visual or more, more verbal. They're verbal about the things that they're going through. Um, you're sniffing ammonia. Possibly if you like to sniff ammonia, uh, you may be doing that. You don't do that in training. Okay. Usually sometimes some people do, but, uh, definitely comes out in competition. And so you start to see people do things that are a little bit different from them because the emotional side is getting to them good or bad. And you can use all of that to your advantage. So I'm not criticizing that, but the emotional side does have an effect. So all of that, the ment the physical, the mental, the emotional, all poses a significant stress on the entire system of the lifter. And because of that, stresses that don't always exist, especially on the mental and, and emotional side, that don't always exist in training. Okay. So after a competition or a significant testing period that you may utilize, it's probably a good idea to back off to some extent. If you followed a lot of the stuff that came out of Westside Barbell, okay, uh, which I have, they used to always say, especially Louis Simmons was a big advocate, you, you're going to do max effort work 52 weeks a year. Okay, well then when you start listening to what they're saying, a lot of the lifters that came out of there and they talk about what they did the week prior to the meet and the week after the meet, you would hear many times that that's not actually what they were doing. They didn't go to a meet and then come back on Saturday and then come back on Monday and have max effort squat and on Wednesday max effort bench. In fact, I've heard lifters say they didn't come back in the gym until the following week. Okay, so it's... Um, that's probably an individual thing, a personal thing as far as what they needed, but don't think you have to be back in the gym just to be hardcore, back in training hard the very first week after the meet. Your body needs a break, okay? Your body needs to have a time to where it can recover from all of those stressors, and then you come back to training, okay? So, but when you come back, what do you do? And that's kind of what I want the point of this video to be. What do you do when you're just getting back into those first initial workouts? And then most people are going to say, well, start off light. Okay, what does that mean? Um, and that could mean a number of different things. 60% might be light, depending upon how you train. Well, what are you doing sets and reps wise? What are you doing uh, volume wise? How many sets at 60%? I mean, there's a number of things that can make even 60%, even though it's a light weight, it could still be hard. Okay, so uh, generally when I'm thinking about coming back, now when I was competing, I did a little bit different than what I do now. So um, I'll kind of give you both ideas. I'm not going to give any solid answers here. You're going to have to kind of figure it out on your own because it's your training and this is something in my mind that is kind of individual um, or should be a little bit individualized according to what the individual lifter needs um, based on their training history, based on um, how many years they've been training, how they train. Um, there's just a number of different factors that can change exactly how they go about this. But when I was competing, generally the first week I would say after the meet, I'd compete on Saturday and I would say, I'm not going to train this entire next week. And then by Wednesday, I wanted to train again. Uh, not hard, but I was usually wanting to do something again. So on that Wednesday, so compete on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, generally that Tuesday or Wednesday is when I started having that itch to kind of do something. I would go ahead and do a workout on Wednesday. It would be very short, 20 to 30 minutes all assistance work. I didn't do any big exercises, um, generally higher reps, 10 to 20 reps per set, and probably with weights that I could have doubled that. So if I was doing dumbbell skull crushers for sets of 10, 
I was probably using weights that I could have done sets of 20. I just wanted to get a little bit of blood flowing. Get some, get some blood flowing, get moving again, get used to feeling a little bit of resistance. That was the only goal of, of the workout, okay? Just to get moving again. Uh, Friday would be similar. It would be more lower body. Uh, then Sunday, I might start doing just a little bit more. And then Monday, I would be back into my plan as far as planned workouts. Everything Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday that I did, if I even did it, was just kind of sh shoot from the hip. You know, uh, no real plan. Let's just go out, start moving again, and, uh, and feel some weight. Nothing serious. Now, the following week, I would start with an introduction period. So on Monday, I would be back to squatting. On Wednesday, I would be back to benching. And I rotate exercises, so I'm never, I probably wasn't doing an actual squat. I was doing some ultra close stance, um, blow parallel box squat. Okay. For bench, I might be doing a close grip or, um, a close grip bench off of a one board or a two board. I wasn't really hammering it hard. At that point, I was probably in the 60 to 65% range based on feel. So pick a weight, work up until I get to a weight that I feel like I could get 12 to 15 reps with, do it for six. Okay. Again, I'm not trying to kill myself in these initial workouts. I'm starting to get back into training and get back into structured programming uh, to set myself up for future blocks. But at that point, I generally would have a full workout. It'd be an hour, hour 15, hour and a half. Um, it would all be lighter, higher reps in the assistance work, um, 60 to 65% for my main exercise but stopping at six reps, maybe three sets, three sets of six with that same weight. My second exercise, my supplemental work, uh, would probably be in the eight to 10 rep range with reps left in the tank. Okay, so that covers kind of the first week after the meet and starting up where I'm getting back into training the second week after the meet. Now jump forward. Okay, I am right now eight years post-competition. So um, I competed for 16 years, I think, and stopped in 2016 was my last competition. It's 2024 now. Uh, so eight years post-competition. Tested my lifts two weeks ago, okay, or a week ago, I guess a week. I've had one full week off. Okay, so I tested my lifts. I took the entire next week off. I didn't do anything. Now, this happened to be a vacation for my family. So being as that I had just tested all my lifts, I really didn't have a desire to go to another gym in another town and get a workout in. However, there were some times that we were doing some hiking, uh, nothing overly strenuous. Uh, and, but a lot of times I was sitting in a car. Okay. So, I would say I was fairly sedentary with some times where I was getting out and going for a walk or doing some hiking. Coming back, want to get back into it now. Okay, I've only had one week off. I'm not taking a long period of time. One week, I am back to doing workouts. Now here, I'm changing being as that I'm older and that I don't have a competition planned 12 to 15 weeks from now. Okay, so I've got, I've got time to work with because I won't test my lifts again until the end of the year. So I've got some time that I don't have to really push, and I'm not competing now, so I don't have to push to get ready for that next week. I don't have that time crunch on there. So I'm starting out this week pretty light. Nothing structured, okay, nothing structured as far as having a written down workout, having it programmed into, okay, this block, this block, this block. This is just a light week. Hopped in today, did a little bit of squatting, not my competitions or not my main style of squatting. I did more of, a, of an Olympic type or a full squat where I'm sitting straight down, letting my knees come forward a little bit. Did some 
three light sets of 10, didn't even get up to probably 50%. Okay, I just wanted to have some weight on my back. I wanted to go through a deeper range of motion than normal. Um, wanted to get some blood flowing. That was a big part of this workout. And get out of that kind of week off where I wasn't doing anything. Get out of that funk of not doing work. Get back in, just get a little work, a little bit of work done. Follow that up with some back extensions, follow that up with some lat pulls, and then some cable lab pull downs. That was the workout, okay? Um, didn't want to do anything overly stressful. Everything was done light. Everything was two sets of 10, except for the squat. I did three sets of 10 and did it all in 20 minutes. Actually, I think the time said 21 minutes so uh, that I finished that. But again, I wasn't trying to have a hard workout. I just want, my main goal was to get in and get some blood flowing again, get some blood flowing through my body, get my muscles used to, not really used to it, but just reintroduce them to handling a little bit of resistance. I will continue this throughout the week. Next week, I will have a more structured plan um, It'll still be an introduction of sorts, but it will be much more structured and progressing me towards uh, what I want to continue throughout that block of training. This block may not be resembled, or this week, okay, again, unstructured, may not have any uh, progression towards next week. I don't know. I haven't planned next week, okay, but it's, it is a block or it is a week of training where I'm just trying to get in workouts, not necessarily training for any specific goal. That will come later, okay? Um, that is it. Again, just to recap briefly, take some time off after a competition. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be so hardcore that you don't let your body and your mind recover from the stresses of that competition. Give yourself a week, okay, to where you don't have to have, you don't have to be in the gym pounding away. Do some light stuff. Get in, do some stretching, some mobility works, things that you may not put time into throughout the, the year or throughout your normal training. Try to get some of that stuff done when you're um, in this week, okay? Then get in back into the gym and start hitting those structured workouts. But give that first week, um, some time where you can just either do very light, non-stressful workouts or take an entire week off. If you've been training for a lot of years, it may be beneficial just to take the entire week off and then get back in. Um, if you're still relatively new to training, if you're in your first five years of, of competing or if in your first five years of lifting or certain, uh, you may want to go ahead and start training that week after the meet but don't feel it's an absolute necessity. It is okay to let your body recover. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you have any comments on what I've said here, leave those as well. Uh, but until next time, always be in the pursuit of strength.